Whether you yourself prefer the quick, technical exchanges of the flyweights, or the high-stakes physicality of the heavyweights, it's hard to argue against the fact that the most perfectly balanced version of mixed martial arts is to be found somewhere in the middle divisions, where speed meets power in a beautiful storm of technical excellence and very real consequences. It seems as though we're in for a treat each and every time a pair of elite lightweights faces off inside the octagon, and with the recent matchup of top 5 contenders Dustin Poirier and Dan Hooker, we were gifted one of the greatest 155 pound fights of all time. What exactly is it that makes lightweight such a phenomenally deep weight class? Is it just a case of good timing, a huge pool of fighters to choose from within that average male frame and size, or just a singularly special time in MMA history that has caused this division to blossom in the way that it has? The answer could well stem from some, none or all of these reasons, but at this point, I don't think it's a stretch to say that this modern day lightweight division is the single most talent rich, deep and watchable division in UFC history. Sure you could point to the light heavyweights of early last decade or the welterweights of both this and past eras, but in terms of finding the perfect mix of intrigue, technical excellence and sheer entertainment, I just can't look past the current crop at 155 pounds. Whether it's the combination of action and precision that Dustin Poirier brings to the table, the unteachable grit and diversity of Dan Hooker, the creativity and unpredictable viciousness of Tony Ferguson, the clinical lefts and bouncing movement of Conor McGregor, the controlled chaos of Justin Gaethje, or the seemingly unbeatable champion who sits above them all in Khabib Nurmagomedov, Lightweight is in a very special place right now. With that in mind, let's have a look at the division's title picture and play matchmaker to some of the fighters who fall in and around that top 5. Khabib obviously is the man with the target on his back at this point in time, and in this current climate, it's hard to know exactly how the identity of his next opponent will be decided. And of course, the hugely unfortunate passing of his father, the massively influential Aldomanop, leaves the champ's immediate future up in the air right now. The global pandemic has certainly thrown a spanner into the works as far as making fights is concerned. One problem in the timing, negotiations, or even the physical health of a given athlete could potentially open the door to a wildcard title fight for a contender who may be second, third, or even Conor McGregor in the pecking order. In my eyes, Justin Gaethje is the most deserving challenger to Khabib's crown. His victory over Tony Ferguson at UFC 249 was an all-time great surprise performance, not in the sense that he should have been seen as an underdog in that battle, but more so due to the way in which he proved his ability to evolve like all great fighters do. Taking the parts of his game that truly worked and adding a professional cam to cap it all off perfectly, Gaethje has transformed himself into the biggest threat to Nurmagomedov's crown. And after decisively beating the man in Tony Ferguson who once held that position, he's undoubtedly next in line. Dustin Poirier of course made a tremendous case for his own merits as the divisional top contender last weekend after engaging in a gorgeously brutal back and forth war with Dan Hooker, edging the city kickboxing product out on the scorecards to get himself back in the win column. For me though, Poirier is still one win away from edging himself ahead of the pack as the one to challenge Khabib given his one-sided defeat at the hands of the champion back at UFC 242. But say for example if Gaethje does take on the eagle next and he does manage to steal away his title, I don't think anyone would have a problem with a well-rested Poirier returning after the hooker fight for a crack of the belt against someone he'd already beaten in the past. However, when I look at the rankings at the moment, I think there are two fights that make a whole lot of sense for the diamond, whenever it is that he is ready to make a return. Firstly, I think Tony Ferguson is a solid pick. I know he absorbed a gargantuan amount of damage from a Justin Gaethje who could barely miss his chin all night, but let's not forget how good El Kukui is. At his age, time is no longer his friend, and while it is a crying shame that his shot at the undisputed belt never materialised, not much can be done to save the frankly bizarre relationship between himself and Khabib at this point. If they do fight down the line, it will feel earned, but it obviously will not be the same. If Tony is adequately rested, I would enjoy seeing him in there with Poirier. It's a fight that would definitely serve as a top contender bout. Sure, Poirier would only be two fights removed from UFC 242, but wins over opponents as good as Hooker and Ferguson would be enough in my book to secure a shot at the belt and whoever has it at that point. But to be honest, for Tony Ferguson, I do think that a fight with Dan Hooker wouldn't be the most outrageous decision, simply due to the fact that it leaves Gaethje tied to Khabib and Poirier tied to what would be a perfectly timed rematch with Conor McGregor. Believe what you want about his retirement, his welterweight ambitions, his plans for 2020 as a whole, Conor wants that Khabib rematch and he wants it badly. 
I think a fight at 155 pounds is what's next in line for McGregor, and given how since last weekend he is all of a sudden the hot commodity at lightweight, Dustin Poirier now ticks every box as a potential opponent. Not only do these guys have history, but given Connor's ever blossoming status as the heel of this division, Poirier is such a likeable, genuine dude that he could play into that dynamic perfectly. So I do believe that Gaethje will get a shot at the belt. But I would also be very careful with that prediction and point out that it would not be below the UFC to sneakily make the conditions unfair or overly dangerous to Gaethje in an attempt to pass him over for a big money rematch with Connor. Justin doesn't take short notice fights and despite his style, he is methodical as hell in his preparation. I don't make the rules, but the UFC have a record of being very very intelligent with the way that they present fights to fighters at certain times and then present their refusal to the media. We've seen them paint numerous contenders in the past in a negative light due to their decision not to take a title fight on short notice or when they are harbouring an injury of some sort. We want to see the best fight the best while they're at their best, but for the most part the UFC have created a culture that rewards the anytime, any place, anywhere mentality and considering that these are professionals, that's not always the right way to approach things. Let's just keep that in mind moving forward. So I could see Tony Ferguson versus Dan Hooker working a treat, but if McGregor does in fact decide to stay at 170 pounds, Poirier versus Al Kukui is the fight to make all day. Lightweight is one hell of a division. You can pair these guys up in every possible way, rematches and all, and you would be guaranteed entertainment no matter how the chips fall. And that's before you even get into the likes of Charles Oliveira, Islam Makachev and Diego Ferreira, and the plentiful other contenders who are just banging on the door and one win away from the top five. It's the best division in the sport, folks. It may even be the most talent-rich division the sport has ever known. So enjoy this golden era at 155 pounds while you can. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and hit subscribe to stay up to date with all of our latest uploads. And as always, thank you for watching.